Croft. Yes. Ah, right into the pan. Hi, I'm Greg Ovens, and this is Ovens Rocky Mountain Bushcraft. What we're doing in this video is we're gonna build another fishomatic. Seals won't give me no static. When I get a house, I'll put it in the attic. Then when I'm old, I'll still have it. The idea with this fishomatic is get the fish in the frying pan this year. Now, instead of the rolling log like you saw in the first fishomatic, this one, I've got uh, my line onto a dowel tight, and basically it's going to be wind powered. I'm going to have my wind paddles, which will turn slowly, so it's controlled. And then the most amazing thing about this trap will be, fish comes up the trough into another trough. When it gets into the other trough, it gets to the end of the other trough, sets another trigger, and a guillotine comes down, dispatches the fish, nip the tip, cuts a line that's holding that trough, which is spring loaded, and then flips it into the hot frying pan. Could take several days, maybe maybe a few weeks to get this working properly, but I guarantee you if I get this working, it's just gonna be awesome, awesome. The only thing with tin is it's kind of noisy to work with, eh? But the fish will slide better on this, believe me. See, it even wants to slide away on its own, so I know the fish will slide on it. Come on, man. I've got my troughs built. Uh, this one, I've got two hinges on it, so it's going to be the one that will flip the fish into the frying pan. The other one, it will just go down to the hole where the fish comes up. And I don't think that the fish matic has to be all that high or all that big, really. I've got two of my paddles glued on. I need uh, two more per side, four more, because this is going to be wind generated, remember? This is going to be just awesome. I'm going to show you my little electric chainsaw. Isn't that the cutest little saw you ever saw? I'm going to scrap the whole idea of using the sticks for the frame on my fish matic and the wind paddles as well. Um, I came up with a new idea. Um, what I'm going to do to pull a fish in this time is use the workings out of a big uh, remote control Jeep. And I'm just going to use regular uh, one by twos so I can screw it together and the project to go a little quicker. I didn't like the, the w relying on the wind idea because then I have to have a windy day. I want to be able to use this even if it's calm out as well. I got to work inside, it's just too cold out. I may have to go to a stronger electric motor. We'll see. I'll try to get this thing apart. Might have to use a hammer, we'll see. The screwdriver doesn't seem to fit properly either. 
I don't really want to destroy the toy because if I can get it apart and it doesn't work, I can put it back together and give it to some some kid, you know, that would like it. I see the surprise look on the kid's face. That'd be cool. I want a car. A car, yeah. Maybe on Christmas Day Santa will bring you a car. <laughs> the motor from the truck, remote control truck, is just not powerful enough. So I think this electric motor, it's, um, I don't know what vehicle, but it's for a power window. Put my main frame together. I mean, it was hard to hold everything together. It was more like an episode on the Three Stooges than anything. Give it to me. You'll notice that uh, I started my frame out of sticks to begin with. I gave up on that idea. I was going to use wind paddles to wind the fish in. I gave up on that idea. And then I was thinking about these bearings. Putting the spool of fishing line on here. Running it with my motor. And I gave up on that idea. I'll tell you why. <clears throat> because I don't see why. I can't just glue the spool right to the wheel on the motor. I try simplifying things as I go. As complicated as the trap might look and seem, as I go, I make adjustments and I realize, hey, I don't need that. I do need this. This is how it works. When you start putting things together, that's when you see where the changes need to be made. Right on. The motor will just mount like this in the middle. And I tried holding this motor when it was running. You can't even stop it by hand. So it'd take a, a sturgeon to stop this thing from spinning. <laughs> and then I got my plate steel, which is going to slide between the two. And down she comes. I'm getting excited. I'm working on the trigger system for the, the uh, guillotine. And it's probably the hardest part of the trap so far. But I did utilize the ends where my bearings were. I glued a dowel in between and it spins quite nice. I got a groove here to the dowel. And this will, when the fish comes through here, will push that easily because of the bearings. So the spool will sit here, line going through the trigger system. This moves easily. My uh, plate of metal will sit here. This will go in the other groove. And this should push right out. Have my one trough hinged. I'm going to JB weld this on, try to secure it. So that when my trigger system comes around, it hits the trigger. Starts the power to the motor. <laughs> so we're getting there. Couple more things. I was just testing the wiring. Turned the switch on. Within about five seconds, the wiring just melted to pieces. It caught on fire even. I wish I would have had that on video. And look what it did to my hand. If you can see burn marks all across my fingers and thumb. <laughs> anyway. I'm going to test the wiring this next time. Switch. I hope I have it right. All right. That's right. I only needed the one wire to there, not two. Well, it worked. <laughs> the stick got jammed.
Oh, I didn't hook the <laughs> I didn't hook the terminals. <laughs> And she flipped. Yeah, and I cut the stake in half. Yep. Cut the stake in half too. And your line. I'm gonna put my firebox together. Use rebar for the legs. And uh, we're good to go. We're good to try this thing. So I want to do another demonstration. This time using a real fish so that I can see where the guillotine is gonna hit the fish. I mean, even a fish I don't want to suffer. Well, the only thing I don't mind torturing is mosquitoes. But anyways, uh, for those that think that this trap might be illegal, I also want to say I've checked with the head CO in this area. I've actually shown him the trap, told him where I go, or what I plan to do with it, and how it works, and I don't have any issues with him at all. But that doesn't mean that in your province or your state, or whatever part of the country you might be in that it may not be uh, a legal method. So check your regs and do like what I do. Talk to your COs ahead of time before you do videos like this. Right on, let's do this demonstration. Broke the line. Oh, see, hook came out. Well, I didn't cut it in half, but wanted to flip though. Him. He was too small. I got the line moving. Come on, fish, bite. We got this stick in here. Well, it cut him. I've got three problems with this trap. It's caught two small fish, got the one in half. First one got pulled past the guillotine as you saw. So what I have to do is I have to, in this, and one got stuck, in this transition I have to figure out where they're not going to get stuck. And I also want to figure out how to shut the switch off as soon as the guillotine goes off so the fish stays in the right spot. So that if it's a small fish, it works. If it's a bigger fish, it works. Because the motor will stop right where the guillotine is. That's what I want to do. To get the fish from here to the second one, I'm just going to use thick pulley. That'll prevent the fish from getting caught on any of these edges. The weight of the fish will certainly push the pulley down, prevent it from getting hooked up, and it'll still be able to flip. Instead of sticks, I got this gate lock. And I'm gonna take the same one I was using, but I was using a stick on this. And then this will hook metal on metal, and it'll come out easy. See? Um, I used a cable on my switch to the guillotine trigger. So, and then tied an elastic band to the trigger. So when the guillotine pulls or the motor pulls the fish, going to shut the motor off hopefully where I want it. The motor pulls. Broke again.
No. The problem is the fish keeps getting jammed between the trough and the cross members here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of metal here that when the trough moves it's going to come up on a hinge and lift the fish into the trough. We got one. Oh, she came off. So that was wild, but like in any fishing situation, some get off. He came off the hook and flipped out of the trough or else I would have had him. I would have had success. Well, that didn't work out, but hopefully next one uh, doesn't come off the hook. So you can see that when the uh, trap, when it catches a fish, the fish protest. We will dismantle oppression board by board. Hey, what's that guy talking about? I don't know, but he's got a megaphone. And jump off the side of the trough. So I think what I'm gonna do is take some tubing that I can follow the old trough with, attach it, it's flexible. The top trough I don't need now, and just pull it into the frying pan like this. And because I got this angle, It'll automatically want to go that way. You gotta be able to, to outsmart the fish. And so far it seems like they've been outsmarting me. And I don't like it. Our line's moving. We're getting some action. He hasn't set the trigger yet though. I hope you can see the line moving, but I don't know. Come on. There. Come on. Work. There he is. In the trough. Yes. Oh, he got off. He broke the line. Oh, man. So it appears to me that if I want to get the fish into the pan, I, I'm going to have to take these boards off and drop the, tr or the, the tube down below and put the pan down here with my fire uh, box. So it's uh, April 10th and as you can see up here in the Rocky Mountains, uh, spring is not here yet. I mean, I've seen snowstorms in May and June up in the mountains here. So I was going to continue uh, trying to catch a fish with my fish o but I got to kind of wait for the blizzard to end, I think. April in the Rockies, man. Where is he? Oh, he came off the hook, but he went in the pan. <laughs> but it didn't pull a guillotine. You want to talk about a blooper? Did you notice that last fish that I caught? I didn't even have the guillotine set up because I was uh, trying to get the line through before this and uh, I forgot to even put the guillotine on. When the fish comes off and goes in the pan, 
look and you'll see the guillotine sitting on the ice. I didn't even set it up. I tell you, sometimes the things I do is just unbelievable. Came off the hook again. Two fish in a row into the frying pan. So it's time to have our briquettes ready, the pan hot, and do a catch and cook with the fish o -matic, the guillotine fish o -matic. This time we get it in the pan and cook it. Right into the pan! The hot pan! All right! Just figured I'd bring my fish up here to cook. That's an awesome trap, man, you gotta admit. Hey? Jeez. This is awesome rainbow. I like my fish, as you've probably noticed from other videos. I eat that right up. But thanks for watching. There you are. Trap went through a lot of different changes, as you noticed. But it was a complicated trap. It wasn't easy to figure it out. When finally, I'm having success, three fish in a row in the pan, even though one got off. Guillotine not set the first time. Third time, put the briquettes in, worked like a charm into the hot pan, and here we go. The guillotine fish o -matic came through. It's setting the hook, it's triggering the toggle switch for the motor. The motor's running through the tube this time, they're not flipping out of the troughs. Oh. And the guillotine worked perfect, perfect spot placement to dispatch the fish and into the pan. Uh, the only thing is the motor didn't shut off that time, but 100% success, if you ask me. Thanks for watching. Remember to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Watch out, Finn. This fish jumped out of the edge of the water for a bug and landed on the ice. A little further, buddy. You're right near the edge. One more flip, come on. Don't go the wrong way. There! You got back in. Wasn't that unusual to see? Cool.